What's up, YouTube? Welcome to more trades. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to another update on crypto. We're going to take a look at the markets and see what's going on. Uh, we've had a lot of interesting moves, but basically we've been since, I believe since March, we've been in this chop. Uh, nothing much interesting was happening. So let's just take a look at the charts and try to figure out what's really happening over here. Now, before we get started, hit the likes, subscribe, and I'm going to fill you in and what do I think and what do I expect. Yeah, risk. It's been a while. I'm doing well. Hope you're doing well and making lots of money on your trading. Now, looking at the charts, I'm going to take you through the charts. We're going to go through Bitcoin, basically. Uh, I have some alerts over here to let me know when the price moves beyond a certain point to be able to know that it's time to get into a trade or uh, get out of a trade, long or short. Now, looking at the bigger picture, as I posted in my Discord a while back, probably weeks back, and I was saying Bitcoin doesn't look bullish yet. It's still forming that pattern that I don't like. This pattern could be either one of two things, but it's more likely than not, honestly, at least. The other possibility over here, this is on the weekly. We could be forming the candy cane pattern. What is a candy cane pattern? Is when it's another variation of a bull flag. We come up, or people call it the Livermore pivot, and we bounce out. That is also another possibility. But how low do we go uh, can be determined using other methods. And I'm going to take you through them. Now, for starters, you need to be aware that as long as we're still stuck in the range and haven't broken the highs, we have a high risk of coming down, eating this entire liquidity over here. All these shorts, I mean longs, that went long over here, they want to come and stop them out. Basically, what happens is when exchanges allow you to take a trade long or short, market maker or the exchanges are opening trades in the opposite direction. So people are going long over here. The exchange at Binance and all that is opening shorts all the way up. Then they come down and collect on your margins, your liquidity. Now, looking at the EMAs at the moment, Bitcoin, you can see this big green candle. We're very far away from the 50 EMA. The 50 EMA is all the way down here at around 47, 348 for today. And if you look at history, history will show you that eventually you make a move up, we form the pattern, and we come down. If the EMA is too far, we're going to come retest it to prove our intention to go all the way up. This is way back. This is in 2021. Go back in history and you'll see the same thing happen all over again. You come up, retest the 50, and if you fail, then you're coming down. If you come up, retest it, retest, and you shoot up. The halving is incoming. Everyone's expecting Bitcoin to go higher. It is a possibility Bitcoin goes higher. And I have a count for that that makes me see that Bitcoin could come to the uh, at least 80k, 82k. But as you know, if you've been following my channel, you know my view about this. You know that I've felt that Bitcoin has to pull back. And I've been saying Bitcoin could go down to 12k. But uh, looking at this, if you pull a Fibonacci from this swing low over here, all the way to the swing high over here, what I would like to see is Bitcoin hold this range. Now, you see this move we can break it down into smaller moves and we go on the hourly and it gets a bit clear. Let me get rid of this fibs and I'm going to show you what I, what I'm looking at on the hourly. Okay. <clears throat> now on the hourly, we came up from down here. Let's go back maybe four hours. Yeah. This could be counted as one wave, probably. 
it could have been a one two a one a two a three a four a five making one wave and then some sort of a correction then we're going to continue higher but you don't want it to lose this level over here at the moment we are at the point 0.5 I wouldn't want it to lose this is at the smaller picture but if I zoom out and go on the bigger picture on the daily and I look at it like this and I say okay we came out over here we had a one we had a two and then we had another one and some sort of a two we pull back and we shot up in a three and a four and we were saying this is a five and the five kind of looks completed you could say this was a small one two and then for the third wave we were one two three four and we continue for five and we pulled back for four now this fourth wave let me try and pull my fib and I want to show you what I'm looking at uh, let me get it uh, should be somewhere around here that is more like it if we say this was a one two this could be a three a big three now you don't want this three to break below the point five fib at 49.333 49.333 is a critical level we want to hold it and we don't want to go beyond it because if you go beyond it then you're saying it's not a fourth and you're going up in a fifth that's what a lot of people are expecting a fourth and a fifth now the scary thing is the fourth could come down all the way down to 50k 49333 is a possibility now you won't know that but if that happens then that could be another buying opportunity not financial advice just showing you level of support at the moment we are at the point 236 point 382 is around 55108 followed by the point 0.5 fib at 49333 now what could happen if Bitcoin comes all the way down there then you could expect Bitcoin to do this Bitcoin came all the way up here and say we pull down all the way to 49333 then a target for Bitcoin can bring it up all to 81k or even 98k that is a possibility that's what people are looking at I don't really care where price goes I just trade the ranges I'm just showing you what I'm looking at and what are my levels that I I uh, consider when trading now this I posted in my discord I was in the belief that this could be a a B and we we came down C somewhere here D up here and I was believing we're coming for an E and we're going up forming some sort of a triangle and we're going to break out but all of that didn't play out and we broke down below uh, the triangle that I had I'll just show you what I was looking at I was looking at that so initially this spiked out it told me okay we're breaking out but as you know we have a lot of fake outs in triangles you can't really trust them this was what was happening I thought it's an A B C D came down for an E and I was expecting a boom out but that didn't happen so what am I looking at next now this is an inter interesting interesting double top your neckline is down here if you break down let's look where it comes from where, do, where can it go where could it take us if we go down here this could bring us down to 49743 very close to my 50k target that I was talking about 0.5 fib would coincide with that now if I put on my indicator anything to find confluence over there any EMAs on the weekly uh, 50k nothing much over here to say that I could find unless I pull out other EMAs which aren't necessary at the moment weekly isn't bullish we're crossing down daily if you look at the RSI on the daily but you never know you might have a sharp spike down just before the halving then the bull run starts that is a possibility now looking at the daily RSI has more room to come to the downside it could do something like this spike up 65k on the price and come back down be oversold and then we spike up we we start doing the bull run because if you go back and you look when we come to this level of the RSI price comes here then we start shooting up not immediately but that's when we kind of start the crazy movement we spike down over here RSI came down over here we made another lower low and we formed hidden bullish divergence I mean bullish divergence and we started the run-up uh, we've done it 
if we go back here over here spike down rsi broke the oversold level and we spiked up this is on the daily remember it takes time to form uh over here spike down rsi down we made a lower low then we started the run and if you go back over and over again over here same thing spike down we had some run up so the run up won't last forever you need to be aware of that spike down rsi went down price spike down you get a move up this was from look small 32,868 all the way up to 45,726 that's 12,000 dollar move and it takes several days it took from 24th of January until 10th of February then we started pulling back down to our starting point remember taking a trade is sometimes you have to take stabs in a trade meaning that you might enter a trade you put your stop loss you get stopped out but you leave some money there so you can re-enter the trade you don't trade with all your money all at once with no stop losses and you don't revenge trade you wait for confirmations now let's go back and just look at in hindsight how could we have known like everyone else uh that 73k this was our high and what could make us take this trade looking in the 15 minute time frame rsi 15 minute time frame this is the method i usually tell you that i use we came up <coughs> over here you would enter a trade probably uh sorry not rsi i wanted the stochastic that's what i look at i'm going to show you what i do with the stochastic it's pretty simple and uh, it's not a hundred percent hit but you could hit get stopped out and sometimes you could be successful over here emas now i'm gonna take away the chart and you can see the emas the 5 and 13 ema over here they wanted to cross down didn't cross down here they wanted to cross down didn't cross down they crossed down but they didn't break the 50 ema but if you go back here and you look at the five crossing the 13 they break they cross over over here and just before that the stochastic crossed over so this could have been your your signal that okay i can enter a trade over here and if you've entered over here then you would have been safe and stochastic bounced around because price went up came down but if you entered just over here 14th of march and just followed that blindly you entered at this point I'm going to show you what could have happened just entering blindly at that 73k let's say 73k or as you waited this red candle to break down over here you would have got stopped out but if you if you if you came at 73k just over here now let's go and look where price came we came very close here you would have got stopped out 73 was never touched again and that's how you could have made money regardless of anything if you wanted to hold on to the trade and you believe bitcoin is going lower but this drop was sufficient i mean you came recently what you did you just spiked below it for people who bought over here now people who bought over here what could have given you a reason to buy over here you had a stopping violet stopping volume candle with sort of a hammer candle but it wasn't it was like a pin bar and uh, that was your sign for a reversal you had an inverse head and shoulders if you took it you'd be okay all the way and if you waited till recently you would have got stopped out so you shouldn't wait all the time now what i see for bitcoin i think that bitcoin has a chance for starters on the hourly i want to show you what i look at i have my fibonacci channels over here we've broken down and whenever we break down these channels i've told my guys that we do come lower but what happened here we had a lot of chop we broke down it looked like we're going lower we came back broke down came back broke down and this could be the time where we even push further what i'm concerned about is that on the four hourly we are having we are having a bearish cross or we had a bearish cross and a lot of times when we have this bearish cross when the 50 EMA crosses the 200 uh what do they call it death cross then that could be on higher time frames it could indicate the end of a move in a certain direction so now we had a death cross we might have a pump up possibly even exceed the 50 EMA that's a possibility now for this move down to remain valid 
and for me to be convicted if I'm already in a trade that this move down might go lower, I need to dissect this. I need to go deeper into the chart. You know, I need to look at it so I don't get caught up. Uh, for started, I shouldn't break the 67, 687. Now I'm looking at this. Up here, it's clearly a correction. And it could have been an A wave down. This was my B and now a C. And the C wave can be a five wave move down. And that is, this could have been the beginning of the C wave one, came down here for the two. And this was the second wave peak. And the third wave already hit its target, 1.618. Now, what I don't want to see, I mean, what you want not to happen if you are bearish, you don't want your, your, you don't want Bitcoin to break above and hold above the 0.5 Fib. As you can see, 66,033 is a 0.5 Fib. That is the fourth wave. So I'm saying, okay, this is the fourth wave. I'm expecting another leg down, a fifth wave. The fifth wave can take me uh, that I'll show you how far I'm looking at I could see the fifth wave maybe going up to the one to one 56 or even it could exceed it could be an extended wave again the 50k range is looking a lot with confluence more than one uh, count shows me the 50k range so I'm looking at that I'm saying that's a possibility now if I come to the 50k range before I get there I'm going to show you what I would be looking at once I start hitting this range. Once I start coming down in 17th November 2021 to 2nd December 2021 is when we were stuck in this range previously. As you see, we broke it violently. This means if we come down, in my opinion, we might range here if we don't just slip through. If you don't see it slipping through so fast as it did over here, then there is a chance we might bing bong a bit here and there are trades you could be exploiting. We have the value area high at 59,060. You have the POC at 57K around 56.9 and you have the value area low at 56,154. These levels will be levels I'm watching if we don't slip through them as like we did before as butter. But when I look at this, this is on the four hourly, we did range a bit on the four hourly, it shows it doesn't look that much, but we did. If you look at the hourly, you would see some bounces over here. If I go back to the hourly and I go here, you notice we had a bit of a stall over here. So if we don't pass by so fast, I would expect a bing bong over here. Yeah, I would be shorting the top of the value area high and longing the bottom of the value area low. POC is the middle of the range. I wouldn't do much. But for now, what am I looking at? So either Bitcoin should come up and hold the 66,000 range and not break above. Then, if Bitcoin starts breaking above and holding above and going up to this level, 67, 671, getting above this resistance, then it's telling me that we might be going higher and we're going to break the highs. Or possibly, you might have another nice short opportunity over here at 71,300. 15 minutes at the moment. I would say it looks like we're trying to climb up. So Tuesday, we might see that move. Green candle, uh, vector candle here, 15 minute stalling, but we're forming some sort of a double top. I don't like this double bottom, but it's like three hits to the low. It might change and become an inverted head and shoulders, and we could have a run up uh, from uh, it could go up to 63.419 and 61.6. So that's about a $2,000 range from 63.619. We could go up the way 65.619, very close to that 66,000 level that I was telling you about, then come down. We are below the daily open, but we are holding very well. We're still in the psychological levels. Uh, we deviated to the high. Uh, didn't break, we broke out, came back in. And we came back to the low and we're holding. So essentially, if you were to ask me, as long as you're holding yesterday's low, uh, I would say say it's around 62.3 up to 62.1. Then you're good for a long. 
how low, how high, uh, that is hard to say because you could come all the way to 63.8 and just come back down. But when you look at it, you have a lot of levels, shaded levels of liquidity over here that you could come and eat them all up. Now let's go to the CME and see if we have any uh, gaps. Did we form any gaps recently? I haven't looked at the charts for a while. Now looking at the CME over here, do I have any gaps over here uh, on the daily? Other than the ones we know down there, 20K and all that. At the moment, can't really see much of gaps over here that need to be filled. But all I can say, we, have, we probably have a small gap over here. Uh, this is not the CME futures, sorry. CME futures. Yeah. see much of a gap maybe somewhere here small gap at 39k I mean there's nothing significant that I can say that really needs to be filled but we do have that gap at 20k we are aware of that gap over here we haven't filled that yet uh, we might come down and fill it and everyone will be expecting the 12k that I thought we were going to now uh, we might get it you never know things uh, could just flip. I mean, some coins were at $120 and now they're at $70. Bitcoin will follow traditionals a lot of times. Nasdaq has pulled back significantly compared to where it was. And we're trying to hold this level. So everything's sort of holding. I mean, uh, dollar has gone back up to the levels where it gets riskier for risk on assets. If we break this level in the dollar, 106.358, the dollar might release up. It has a gap over here in this chart that can be filled, and we might be going higher. There's still levels for the dollar up there, 118, 120 measured moves. I mean, it's not looking, it was looking bearish a while back. Now the dollar sort of forming a big cup and handle, or you could call it a big double bottom. You can call it anything. So it's getting riskier for risk on assets. What I would do is I wouldn't, I mean, if I was a holder at these levels, I would be considering taking some of my profit. And if I'm a holder now, this dip to 60k would be a level maybe I would put in some money. And if we come even lower to this range, I will put in some money because it's a level of a probable bounce. Once we start breaking the 50k, $50,000 range, then it gets really bad and risk. it gets riskier for Bitcoin. So yeah, I think that uh, Bitcoin could be doing all right, but we have levels to worry about. We have this naked point of control to be claimed. Uh, it doesn't have to be claimed, but it is a possibility. We can't come and tap it again, either flush out or bounce off this level. I'm going to take a look at Solana. I haven't looked at it. Solana was doing really well, but then again, Solana came all the way up to around 210, 211K, and now we're at, we came all the way down to 113 I was expecting Solana to go back down. This was way back here. I was expecting Solana to even come down between 5 to $7 range, and we haven't. Expectation is something, and trading is something else. You trade the chart however it moves. You could expect what you want to expect, but it doesn't have to mean anything. Charts will move the way they want to move. This, in my opinion, doesn't look bullish, but hey, sometimes the charts do moves like that, and it looks like it's it, and we're going to dump and then you get another pump up. Ethereum, Ethereum, look where it was. It almost hit that level 4,150, my level for short. This was another level for short. And this, if you break below this, 2,966, that could be another level for short to 2,667. Let's pull up the fixed range volume profile and see how far it goes. Yeah, 
This could be another level of support if you start falling, 2,671. But my problem is if you start coming down here, then the overall look of Ethereum won't be looking that bullish. Then you're, you're changing what it was. Supposedly, this was a fourth wave. If you thought, then it should hold the 0.5, but you're coming down to the 0.618, so that could take you even lower. That's a scary thing, and that's when people get scared and start selling at the lows, whilst big money starts buying once it's dumping. So in my opinion, this could be a chance to load up, not with your entire, I mean, margin, not all your money in, but you could load up with a small amount, but I'm expecting at least another test of 60K, and possibly we could be dumping whole, because once you start below 67, 60,785, you could flush down these three candles, the daily candles. You could just come down. Uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on Bitcoin. I mean, if you like it, smash the likes, subscribe to the channel, and join the free Discord. Uh, haven't been posting much of videos. I'll try to post one whenever I get the chance every now and then. But yeah, we are in a zone we are in a range and if you just look at it like this if i remove everything and you look at that you look at this i'll show you something sometimes you need to zoom out and just look at things in a different way you are in a range that is your range Or you could pull it up. The bottom of the range was this, but this could have been a deviation, just a deviation, 59,127. Uh, not necessarily, you don't have to come down there again, but you could come down to 60K and say, that's your box. I'm going to take a chance over here, long it, hoping for 75K, or at least take some profit in the middle of the range at around 67,850. If it starts getting above that, then I move my stops into profit, hoping for a breakout. If we come down, then I'm in profit. But it looks like Bitcoin, in my opinion, is about to make a move soon. Uh, either to the upside or to that, something's going to happen. Um, now, I want to look at something I haven't looked at for a while, and that's the Caterpillar. Um, um, and see how tight is it at the moment. On the hourly, I like to look at it. And on the hourly, I like to measure the length. And let's see how wide is it. Is it really contracted? We are at the bottom, so it's not looking that we're at the bottom side of this. So the explosion looks like it might happen to the downside, but we're very wide. I mean, the best moves is when we coil up and we get so tight. I'm going to show you an example of a nice uh, indication that, yeah, something might happen really soon. This kind of tightness. That's what you like to see. You were at the bottom, you came at the, you were at the top, you came to the bottom, and you were coiling up over here. And if you take a measurement from here to here, you see it's around 1.92% wide. Then those explosions happen in either direction. When it's below 2%, in my opinion, is the best. Look at these contractions. At the moment, we're quite wide, but even when we're wide, we could get a move. You see how wide we were here? We still got to move up. And it rode up, then came down. So not necessarily all the time that you have to be um, contracting. Over here, we didn't get much chances of very tight contractions. We were in a chop. We're still in a chop. But if you ask me, weekly hasn't told, showed me anything bullish until we break the highs. That's my opinion. And... If you look at the weekly, we were bumping our head at the top. And if we go to the look at the Bollinger Bands and see how do we look on the four hourly and on the daily. On the daily, on the weekly, we have hit the high. We have smashed the highs and uh, it doesn't look too good. <coughs> on the daily, usually when you get a breakout, you get a follow through three days, something like that. Then you could reverse. So there is a chance Bitcoin could get a bounce from now into the weekend, but this is vomiting out. On the four hourly, 
we are stabilizing but we're not getting a bounce we are curling upwards on the hourly yeah and if we go and look at the MACD MACD can show us something MACD on the hourly we are pushing down MACD is crossing over there might be a reversal over here four hourly yeah we're trying to curl up uh, this is looking good in the Bollinger Band support we are curling up so there might be a move up daily <coughs> MACD isn't looking so bullish it will take another it could take another day or two if not longer this was a good indication uh, for a short I mean if you go here let's look at the EMEs and see how did they look over here at this point at this point the EMEs were starting to cross down so you could have gotten here if you took it from the high you would get in at 72.419 and you'd be good MACD at the highs over here this was the MACD at the highs this looked like the MACD is going to reverse and we're going to dump hard this was over here we had a small move down MACD could fool you sometimes and then we had a pump and as we had the swing low we had this breakdown and you can see the MACD came all the way down till here so I'm telling you sometimes they work sometimes they don't that's why you have your stop losses anyways that's it for me for now hope you liked it hit the like subscribe to the channel join the free discord and if you really like to support the channel link to the PayPal where you can donate uh, any amount to support the channel more trades I'm out